Hello YouTube, how are you doing? Today I will be showing you how to do the initial setup of your Chinese diesel heater. Um, they come with various pipes and all that kind of stuff, but the instructions are notoriously bad. So where do all these bits go? Let's get into it. Okay, let's run through a few of the pipes that come with the uh, heater. The first one here, uh, they might be different colors in your kit, but they're all much the muchness. Uh, this is a, um, the black one here is the air. Uh, tube basically so this will connect to the air filter which is this little uh, jobby just here and that will connect into the bottom of the heater um, so keep these together because they get connected together this one here is a steel pipe um, it's quite flexible um, but it's also quite stiff as well but you can manipulate in that into any shape you like that will also come out the bottom of the unit but it's very important that you get this in the right hole so uh, stay tuned to find out where that goes We've also got in this packet a silencer. Um, so this will connect onto the end of the exhaust. I don't know how loud it will be. Will we need it? Let's find out. But uh, that's what that uh, silver, looks like a back box off of a car. Um, and also we've got this flexi pipe tube just here. Uh, this will connect onto the front of your diesel heater um, and gives you some option to direct the air wherever you want it basically. So let's turn over the heater so we can access the bottom. It is important to do this before you put any diesel in it uh, because uh, in doing so you might have a spillage. So do this before you put diesel in it. Let's get to it. Okay, so you might have to get into some little nooks and crannies with your screwdriver. Um, so it's easier really to do this next part. If you take this lid off, um, what you've got is these four little latches here, which connect and into the uh, chassis of the heater. Now they're not very easy to get off and it's really difficult to get your fingernail under there. So you should have a little tab just here. If you push down on the tab from the top and it should loosen off. And then you've got this little tab that uh, fits in this little uh, socket just here so go ahead and do that for the rest of it and then we'll get the unit on its side now you might not be able to get the uh the cover off uh unless you take the lid off of your oil, the oil sorry diesel uh filler bottle so make sure you get rid of that and then we can get started so once you've got the side off of your heater you will notice just how flimsy this thing is when it doesn't have the cover on uh, so luckily we won't have it off for too long um, and uh, yeah this is not fixed in either so make sure you hold on to that when you tip it on its side so let's go ahead and do that now okay so now that you've accessed the bottom of the device uh, you can see the undercarriage you've got just here and um, we've got uh, a port and an outlet now they're both the same diameter um, I guess they look exactly the same to me so uh, what is important to note is that the air filter okay uh, and the airline connects onto this one on the left hand side depending which way you've got it flipped over but it is the one nearest to this fuel pipe okay you don't want the fuel pipe to be closer to the exhaust so this is the exhaust this is the air intake right next to this pipe so uh, you might need a long screwdriver just to get to the jubilee clip so i'm going to go ahead now and get that attached and uh, get it tightened up okay in order to get the jubilee clip over the end of this pipe here you might need to loosen it off a little bit it's just a little screwdriver uh phillips head some of them are just a uh, flathead screwdriver um, and what you will want is you will want this uh screw section here with the uh hole for the screwdriver basically facing upwards so that you can gain access to it once you've sl slidden it onto this uh inlet pipe just here so i'm going to go ahead and do so and you've got a little access channel just here so you can get your screwdriver in and tighten it up so let's do it going to need two hands for this I'll be back in a sec so the air inlet pipe is now nicely connected on there nice and uh, firm the next thing we need to do is get this pipe which is the exhaust pipe onto this one here um, same deal put your jubilee clip on make sure it's accessible through this access hole just here um, and this will vent out of this back tube out of the back of the unit okay and um, there's a little hole cut away in the chassis there for that to go through but what you will need to do is create a like a 90 degree bend because that's quite a tight uh quite a tight route that that needs to take so i'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and i'll be back in a second when we get uh connecting it so i've got to, as best as i can get to a 90 degree angle on that um okay so what this will do this will feed through this little hole just here and connect 
um, onto this exhaust pipe like so. Now I haven't put the Jubilee clip on just yet, I just wanted to check whether it's going to fit. And one thing I did notice is it does protrude a little bit um, further than the bottom of the chassis. So uh, I'm probably going to prop this up on a couple of blocks of wood anyway, just to make it a little bit more sturdy. But do be wary of that. You might need to create some more space underneath. Um, I can't get a tighter 90 degree bend in it than that. And I've seen other videos, other people actually having the same problem. So if you can chock it on a, a couple of blocks of wood or something like that, uh, jobs are good. And let's get this tightened up. The great thing about these uh, heaters, they're all nice and cheap and very economical to run, but they are, it is as if that they've been designed by the work, uh, work experience uh, lad. Um, definitely someone who's never designed anything before. It's just the way things go together is a little bit uh, Chinese, uh, you know. <laughs> but they all seem to work okay, so, they're, and they're all like this, but, uh, you know, we just need to root these things as best we can. Even that protrudes a little bit further than uh, the threshold with this little uh, base block just there. So we're gonna have to pro prop it up on something or other, uh, but there's plenty of bits of wood kicking around here, so we'll get that sorted. That is the bottom done. These are both done up nice and tight. Make sure this exhaust one in particular is done up nice and tight um, because you don't want any leaking fumes um, because you don't want to get any carbon monoxide fumes anywhere near you. So uh, let's tip it back on its uh, the right way up and see what else we can hook up. Yeah, look at that. That's as, uh, that's as good as it gets, unfortunately. But I'll raise this up a little bit so that's no drama. And uh, put some little uh, legs, you know, put a bit of wood on each end just so it's got more lateral stability. Um, so, jobs are good. And let's get the air box fitted and also the silencer. Okay, same deal with this little air filter. It's very basic. This is a couple of bits of plastic stuck together. And uh, if you can just see inside, it's got on the outer wall around here. Got a little bit of foam which probably does absolutely nothing um but uh it's always good to have a filter of any description anyway this just goes on here and then you do the clip up again okay clip all fitted and nice and tight nice one let's see what else we can hook up okay as i mentioned before we've got this little back box looking device uh, looks like a back box off of a car but it's got some sort of baffle stuff going on inside there this connects onto the end of this tube again via a jubilee clip now mine actually has got a jubilee clip, jubilee clip missing uh from the pack uh but that doesn't bother me actually because i'm not going to fit that this is going to be vented straight out of the through the wall um uh, or by the side of my garage door um so i'm not going to bother about the silencer i don't have to be particularly quiet here so i don't really care about that so that will be staying off one thing worth mentioning, which I've not heard anyone else mention, basically, is with regard to the exhaust, you might have some condensation uh, building up in there. So it is important that that can get out. So make sure the exhaust port, the exit, is lower than the outlet, okay? And you should have no problem with any buildup of any condensation. Okay, now all that's left ancillary-wise is this uh, hot air outlet. This is where your hot air will come out, and you, it looks like it's got some sort of vent which you can sort of di direct the heat to a certain extent. Um, but this looks like it will extend as well once it's all fitted. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fit the. Going to go ahead and fit this Jubilee clip over there, and then we can get it tightened up on this outlet just here. Make sure it's nice and snug on there and then get tightening up this jubilee clip again there you go oh snug this it looks like this might be quite satisfying actually when this gets extended so we'll have a little go at that for Pull it, oh look, the end just comes straight out. So that needs Jubilee clipping on as well. There is another big Jubilee clip in the spares bag, just there. Um, so yeah, that is it, basically. One thing I would like to mention, um, very important actually, if you're gonna be taking on a project uh, with one of these diesel heaters, um, it is very important that you arm yourself with a carbon monoxide alarm. Um, now, a lot of people probably don't bother, and it's absolutely fine, but anywhere where there's an exhaust, uh, you can have issues. And from a personal point of view, I've actually had a family member lose their life to carbon monoxide poisoning on a fishing trip last year. Um, so definitely get yourself a carbon monoxide detector and alarm. You cannot be too safe. Right, 
all that's left is to put the case back onto this bad boy and then fire up the electrics. So that will be in a separate video. Thank you very much for watching and you'll see the next video pop up on the screen in just a few moments. So if you found this helpful, do subscribe and leave a comment and let us know how many uh, odd features you found on your diesel heater. Catch you later.